I've researched the carbon footprint and other factors on why they're banning plastic bags and surprisingly found that paper bags and reusable bags are far more harmful to the environment than plastic bags. And in fact, I found that plastic bag bans actually cause plastic bag manufacturing companies to become richer. So much so that their revenue as much as doubles when a plastic bag ban comes into effect in an area. Now it might be a good time to get your hands on some of those reusable bags if you haven't already. Or so they told us. Because plastic bags are now the ecosystem's public enemy number one. Or so they want us to believe. So how did this all start? So about two years ago, the New York State Department of Sanitation discovered that residents were using around 23 billion plastic bags a year. And each year, around 85% of those plastic bags end up in landfills, and waterways, they end up clogging recycling machines, they end up in streets, and they last for hundreds if not thousands of years in a landfill. And then the bag waste reduction law was passed in an effort to prevent litter and reduce greenhouse emissions that are caused by the use of plastic bags. However, I'm making this video here today to ask, does it really reduce greenhouse emissions? Hmm. So the alternative to plastic bags is paper bags and reusable bags. But shockingly, it has been discovered that when manufactured, paper bags and reusable bags actually have a bigger carbon footprint than plastic bags. Paper bags have a bigger carbon footprint than plastic bags because it takes a whopping four times to manufacture a paper bag than it does to produce a plastic bag. In fact, the amount of greenhouse gas produced when producing a paper bag is less than that of a plastic bag or a reusable bag. Plus, the chemicals and fertilizers used when producing a paper bag is even more harmful to the environment. You have to use a paper bag at least three times before it's equal to that of a plastic bag. So get that, how on earth do you reuse a paper bag anyway? Also, paper bags require that trees be cut down in order to produce the bags. Meanwhile, plastic bags are produced from the waste products of oil. And that's not all. When produced, paper bags release a higher concentration of toxic chemicals than single-use plastic bags. Even though they are the alternative to plastic bags, they require more energy to transport because paper bags weigh more. As a result, transportation of paper bags when being transported in bulk to distribution centers and stores requires more energy and adds to its carbon footprint. But I would like to add that there's one simple thing that you can do that will not add to carbon footprint at all, which is to give that leg button a pound. Seriously, I'm an engineer and I calculated the carbon footprint based on the server power at YouTube to reach into their database and update the like button on this video after you press it. And it is estimated that your like on this video will be less than one millionth of the carbon footprint of a plastic bag. It's like that small. Seriously, you can't even see one millionth of a plastic bag. Trust me, it's like a nanogram. I know these things. So, but back on topic, and because paper bags are made from biodegradable to make human... <laughs> but back on topic, and because paper bags are made from biodegradable materials, people tend to assume that they're harmful. However, when deposited into landfills, paper bags break down into methane. Methane happens to be one of the most powerful greenhouse gases in our environment. So this is one misconception about biodegradable materials. They do not properly break down in landfills. Methane is around 30 times more potent of a greenhouse gas than carbon dioxide. And although a paper bag is more recyclable, it's not as durable. I mean, let's face it, can a paper bag really withstand three trips to the supermarket? I don't think so. So if paper bags really have a bigger carbon footprint than plastic, why are they the alternative? Well, paper bags are eco-friendly in some ways. They can decompose in the soil with the help of bacteria instead of clogging up waterways and polluting the ocean like plastic bags. Paper bags could just take days to decompose while it might take plastic bags hundreds of years. And they can be recycled. Basically, by using paper bags, you're saving nature from litter. And that's pretty much it. They're most certainly not green, at least not in the emission sense. And I've even heard people say that paper bags are fashionable. Compared to a plastic bag that can be easily wrinkled, paper bags are sturdy, and this is why some classy brands use paper bags as part of their brand. If you want to look up scale, opt for a paper bag. Hey, don't look at me, I don't make this stuff up. 
But at a time when we're concerned about putting more CO2 emissions into the atmosphere, we're using more paper, we're killing more trees. All these trees are supposed to consume the very CO2 that we're making. The carbon footprint of a single use plastic bag is 1.58 kilograms of CO2. The carbon footprint of a single paper bag is 5.52 kilograms of CO2. And it takes one tree that is 15 to 20 years old to make 700 paper bags. A fully grown tree is said to absorb 21 kilograms of carbon dioxide per year. Year. So let's do the math here. You eliminated a tree, which let's say will survive 100 years, that will consume around 2,100 kilograms of CO2 within its lifetime. So that you can make 700 paper bags, whose carbon footprint cost to manufacture is 3,864 kilograms of CO2. So if you combine the carbon footprint cost to manufacture, plus the loss of consumption of CO2 because you've just killed the tree, you get 5,964 kilograms of CO2. Now if you compare that with say 700 plastic bags, you get a carbon footprint of only 1,104 kilograms of CO2. These plastic bag bans are obviously not about saving the environment. Now before I get into reusable bags, which is insanely worse than paper bags, by the way, I'd like to say this. The plastic bag bans are really benefiting those who have a problem with litter around cities and around waterways or areas surrounded by water. Areas that are not surrounded by polluted bodies of water may not see the need for plastic bag bans. However, your response to plastic bag bans may depend on how plastic bags actually affect you, either by littering or its carbon emission footprint. If your gripe is with litter and you care nothing about putting excess carbon emissions into the environment, then you'll opt for paper bags. If your main gripe is with putting excess carbon emissions into the environment and you could care less about litter, then you'll opt for plastic bags. It seems to be the preference of people. In the long run, as I described in the beginning of this video, plastic bag bans only benefit plastic bag manufacturers, but I'll get to that in a second. First, Let's talk about reusable bags. The reusable bags that we use are non-woven polypropylene bags or cotton bags. The polypropylene bags have a carbon footprint of about 47 pounds. The reusable polypropylene bags have to be used around 11 times before their environmental impact is equal to that of a plastic bag. But the cotton shopping bags have to be used 131 times before they can reduce their environmental impact on the environment. That's insane. Now when it comes to where these bans are in effect, New York is obviously the first place that comes to mind for me, but it's not the only state to implement a plastic bag ban. For example, New Jersey just enacted a plastic bag ban that's one of the most strictest of them all. In fact, it's called the trifecta, whatever that means, because it not only bans plastic bags, but also bans paper bags and styrofoam. Styrofoam containers for food, that is. But the New Jersey law does make plastic straws available at restaurants if you ask for them. Paper bags are also banned in New Jersey for the obvious reason that they take more energy to produce than plastic bags. So that's kind of understandable. But as a result, grocery stores can't even charge for paper or plastic bags. They can't hand them out at all. So that option is simply not available. The alternative is for grocery stores to give away reusable bags or charge for reusable bags. Or they can say, hey, you voted for the guys who made this law bring your own bag. Some points to note, for a bag to be considered reusable, it must have handles and must be made from so, some sort of washable fabric. And it must be made to withstand at least 131 uses and be washed multiple times. All these laws went into effect in New Jersey in early May, 2022, which coincidentally, when I was just planning this video and started to do my research for it back in late April, I had no idea that this was gonna happen. So it's sort of like a coincidence in my timing for making this video. Now going back to New York, New York City imposed a five cent charge on all paper bags. The goal that the fee was meant to achieve was to encourage shoppers to bring their own bags rather than pay the charge for the paper bag. At first, there was a reduction in paper bag usage, but eventually as time went on, customers just started to pay for the charge of the paper bag. So everything just went back to normal. Interestingly, as the plastic bag ban was implemented, sales of other plastic bags began to skyrocket. And this is where the whole premise of this video comes in. You see, typically people use shopping bags as liners for their small trash cans. But since the bag ban prevented the use of plastic bags, shoppers had to buy plastic garbage bags to line their trash cans. Of course, as, for, as the demand for plastic garbage bags went up, prices also skyrocketed. People began buying packs of garbage bags, which ended up defeating the purpose of the bag ban to begin with, and the fees that went along with them. There was a study that found that communities in California saw an increase in sales of four-gallon garbage bags 
bags go up from 55 to 75 percent. Also, the sale of eight gallon garbage bags went up from 87 to 110 percent. The increased sales of plastic bags proved that plastic bag manufacturing companies taking advantage of the fact that plastic shopping bags are being banned. They know that these shopping bags have a second life use of trash bags and most people do reuse them. And all this has led to an increase of sales and an increase of price of all these alternative bags. By the way, if you're not subscribed yet, make sure you subscribe if you enjoy sticking it to the man rather than having the man sticking it to you. I just thought I'd throw that in there. And click that like button too. But it's almost as if plastic bag makers are manipulating the economy and policy makers so they can gain more profits. The increase in plastic bag sales could also be measured by weight. If people start purchasing four gallon plastic bags, it's estimated that plastic bag consumption will increase from 30 pounds to 130 pounds per store per month. Also, the sale of eight gallon bags would create an additional 37 to 224 pounds per month per store. And companies like Kohl's and Woolworths made a profit of $71 million when they replaced their lightweight bags with a more heavier 15 cent option. Previously, they had making sales at around an average of three cents a bag. So from three cents to 15 cents. Their new scheme of producing heavier bags allowed them to produce 1.2 billion bags at a cost of $106 million. As such, selling the heavier bags at 15 cents each created a new revenue stream for them. These studies show that it's important for policy makers to understand the unintended consequences of plastic bag bans and the fees that come along with them. They should know all this stuff before implementing it. Because if shoppers are reusing plastic shopping bags for everyday use and then suddenly they don't have them anymore, there's gonna be a change of lifestyle that everyone has to go through and a change of finances because they have to spend more money. This video has been a long time coming for me. Just like a month before the lockdowns, a plastic bag ban came into effect in New York. And it was really annoying. So annoying that I began to ponder the purpose of it. After all, that was in effect. You see, I enjoy saving money and making the most of my resources and reusing plastic bags has been something I've been doing my entire life. They're the perfect size for bathroom trash cans and office trash cans. They can be used for baby diapers and puppy pads and so on. They can be used when you want to clean out your car. They can be used for tons of stuff. And back when I was a little boy, everybody was using paper bags and then suddenly there was this big push to get everybody to use plastic bags, to switch to plastic bags so that we can save the environment. So as I pondered all all this I started to think now that I can't reuse the single-use shopping bags anymore I actually have to go out and buy boxes of small garbage bags. I have to actually buy extra garbage bags so I'm actually spending more money so there you have it big businesses are making even more money at the expense of everyone else ha so what else is new and then when I found out that plastic bag bans are environmentally unfriendly I wondered how they even convinced us to do this in the first place now let's play devil's advocate here. We can be fair. When it comes to the plastic bag ban, it goes without saying that they do reduce the amount of litter. This is especially the case for cities and urban areas. Banning plastic bags has resulted in a lot less litter. Secondly, and at least continuing to play devil's advocate here, something that some people usually don't even think about, the plastic bag bans actually reduce the need and use of petroleum. The bans would reduce the need on the very limited non-renewable resource. One study shows that between eight and 10% of the total US oil supply goes to making plastic. This means that every year an estimated 12 million barrels of oil are used in making plastic bags. So if we reduce plastic bag use, we reduce oil. And finally, banning plastic bags actually protects recycling infrastructure. The truth is, and you may not know it, but not all plastic is recyclable. Items like plastic bags, straws, coffee cups, all not recyclable. In a survey done by multiple recycling facilities by the New York State Department of Environmental Conservation, it was recorded that these facilities spend between $300,000 and $1 million every year to deal with plastic bags caught in recycling systems. So plastic bag bans aren't totally bad. Look, I get that. It's not what I'm trying to say here. I'm merely trying to make people aware that plastic bag bans are not all bells and whistles and in some ways can do more harm than good. And if you know anybody who lives in an area affected by these plastic bag bans, please share this video with them and tell them to subscribe. And if you're not subscribed, make sure you subscribe to this video so you can get more content like this. Also comment below to let me know how you've been affected by these bag bans and let me know where you are. And by the way, I also created some polls on LinkedIn related to this subject. I'll link to the polls below. Polls like, do you live in a state with a bag ban? Yes, no, or coming soon. And do you prefer plastic shopping bags, paper bags, or reusable bags, and so on. And with that said, you guys, if you enjoy saving money, I have this recent video right here about the best high interest savings accounts in 2022. And I also have this video right here about how to save 90% of your income. Please make sure you click that like button because it took me quite some time to come up with the research for this video. I totally deserve it for putting in that extra effort.
hope you know that. And hit that bell icon while you're at it so you'll never miss an upload. You'll get notified whenever I post content like this. Follow me on LinkedIn. I'm very active there, as you can tell. Link in the description below. Thank you very much for watching, and I'll catch you guys later.